happens to be two years old. A couple of months ago, she came to me and she asked of me something. And she said, Uncle, can you make a WhatsApp stick of me? I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I made the first one. She didn't like it. I made the second one. She didn't like it. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth and the seventh one. Still, no breakthrough. So she said to me, Uncle, I think you're not getting it. Okay, let's make another deal. Can you create for me a LinkedIn account? I was like, no, no way. Mind you, she's two years old. She wants me to create a LinkedIn account for her. So I said, okay, under one condition. If you can tell me or name any two social media platforms that were created by an African or Africans, dead end. That was the end of everything. As I got to ask myself this question, I said, though she, my niece is two years old, she couldn't name, but how many of us adults can give me an answer to the question? In this room, how many of us can name any two social media platforms that were created by an African or Africans. I'm sure 90% of, of us here do have mobile devices that can access the internet. And if your phone can access the internet, what it simply means is you have access to Google Play Store. And you have access to Google Play Store, then that means you have access to the following platforms communication, health, agriculture, transport, and religion. So according to statistics, Facebook has around 2.5 billion monthly users. And of the 2.5, 104 million are Africans. What's up? as 2 billion monthly users, and of the 2 billion, 200 million are Africans. Of the total population, sorry, of the total number of people who use LinkedIn, 9,500,000 are not only Africans, but they are South Africans which contributes to 15.6% of its total population. That's almost like three quarters of Zimbabwean population. And the top, the top five most used platform in Africa, we have at number one Facebook on 88%, followed by Instagram, on 76%. LinkedIn occupies number three on 74%, followed by Twitter and WhatsApp on 67 and 58% respectively. So why this presentation, you might ask? 
I'm here to talk about why we need to embrace all the technological development young Africans are producing to further the growth and impact of our continent to the rest of the world. One of my favorite quote goes like this. The uniqueness of the African means of communication is embedded in the originality, creativity, tradition, and above all, in the culture of the people. As Africans, we have our own ways of making things happen and staying for good. We have great people in Africa who have created great applications that we use every day, like Maisha Medic, the popular Kenyan one, M-Pesa, the popular Zimbabwean one, Ecocash. We have TalkChat, we have Sasai, we have Yomix, we have Mkuru, we have Zimbo Grocery, we have Tisitano, we have Zivai. Of these applications that I've mentioned, how many of them are we using right now? The continent has four key areas with special innovations that is in communication with the likes of Zivai and TalkChat and healthy with the likes of Maisha Medic. Number three, we have education and we have agriculture. So there are three reasons that I want to share with you today why we must embrace African innovation. Reason number one is it gives us a sense of identity. Come to think of it, how do you feel when you travel outside the continent of Africa? Only to find out that the means of communication or the communication platform you created, I'm giving it as an example, on, that is on Google Play Store being used in the United States of America. How do you feel? Giving us a sense of identity makes us who we are today because we are what we are today because of the things that we do as a people. It improves the global market reach, which can help expand business networks and increase sales. I've come to think of one thing, or I have researched and found out that in most cases, what we do as Africans, we tend to help the outside world knowingly or unknowingly. Now, as I close, we are in the house of the Lord. Let me finish by saying this. In the Bible, there is a guy named Nimrod. So Nimrod went to his people and sold the idea of building a tower that could reach heaven. And at some point, God said, let me go down and find out what these people are doing. So when he got on earth, the first thing he found out was the building was complete. But later on in the Bible, you see that the building wasn't physically complete. It was completed in their minds. So what am I talking about? If you and I can come up together and help those in Africa who are creating platforms to reach the world, then we will become one. I'm talking of the power of unity. I'm talking of the power of identity. If you and I can help the next person who has created this platform or that platform, then we can be identified as a people with a strong sense of belief. Thank you.